Hey, what's up, fellas? How you doing, man? It's Anelli here. Hey, what's going on guys? How we doing? Matt Antonelli here. I get asked a lot from people, Matt, when did you kind of know that your career was over? When, when did you know you weren't a prospect anymore? And so there's a couple of things that happened in my career, the last year of my career, where I knew, yeah, this is basically done. I'm going to have to go get a, a, a new job because uh, the baseball thing isn't really working out. And so we're going to go over those three things that happened to me my final year of my career, 2013. Okay. Um, First thing that happened is I was put on the Phantom DL. Okay, so real quick, the disabled list, now called the injured list, not called the disabled list anymore, is basically when something happens to you, you get injured and you can't play. But instead of just keeping you on the roster, they're able to put you on an injured list so that they're able to bring somebody else up and play them. So it gives them an extra roster spot. Okay, and this happens in the major leagues as well as in the minor leagues. And so I'm in the minor leagues, I'm in AAA. I'm in spring training, and I'm having the best spring training of my life. I think I was hitting like four something, and I'm pumped. I know I'm not going to the big leagues, but I'm like, you know, I'm going to be a starter in AAA, and if I do well, maybe I get back up to the big leagues again. Um, last day of spring training, get called into the front office, and uh, they say, Matt, uh, you know, great job this spring, really, really good job. Um, you know, we've got two options for you. And I was like, oh, go to the big leagues or stay here? I'll go to the big leagues. And uh, they said... Um, they said, you can um, be released and go join any other team. And I'm like, first, I'm like, well, this conversation uh, took a sharp right turn to where I was not expecting. And they said, uh, or you can stay here and you can be on the Phantom DL. And I was like, I, I don't like either one of these options. Do I have, is there an option three, a door three, please? And uh, they said, nope, these, this is it. This, uh, make your decision. And so basically what the Phantom DL is, is... You're not really hurt, right? Um, but they 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 kind of want you to stay around, but they want someone else to play, kind of. It's a weird thing. Um, doesn't happen a lot, but I, this is the first time it ever had happened to me. And I was like, okay, so I can go someplace else where I don't even know if anyone else wants me. Um, I'm at the end of my career. I've been hurt a lot, um, or I can just stay here and hope somebody else gets hurt. <laughs> That's mean. I don't didn't. Kind of hope someone else gets hurt so I can play, um, and so I had a, I called my agent and I told him, and he was a little bit surprised because you know most of spring training I was telling him how well I was hitting, um, but again when you get older you know at this point I'm like 20, I think I was like almost like 29 years old somewhere around there, um, and that doesn't sound old but when you're in the minor leagues that's kind of getting old unless you've had a ton of big league time. So I had to make a decision, and uh, and I decided to go on the Phantom DL. All right, so I, I decided to pretend to be hurt, and I said, I'm like, man, I've missed like 400 games in my career. I'm really good at this hurt thing. Like, I can pretend to be hurt really easily. And my wrist was, pro is, was probably hurting me at that point, so I, that was easy. But I think I pretended like I had a hamstring or something like that. Um, and so that's when I knew. That was one of the things where I knew. And so I, I went to AAA Columbus, and I got like three at-bats in a month, um, really doing nothing. Uh, most of the time I was on the DL and then they would take me off to play a little bit and uh, then I go back on and and so um, I got released about a month later okay so that's number one number two is uh, is when the manager skips you <laughs> so this happened to me in the same place the manager skips you and basically um, you know his interpretation of phantom DL is basically you're invisible so I'm the only guy in the Phantom DL, so technically I'm on the team. I do everything the team does, right? So I travel with the team, I stay with the team, I practice with the team, I'm on the bench for the team. Everything is the same. The only difference is I can't actually go into the game. That's the only thing, right? I can't go into the game. And again, I, I've been when I, I started on the Phantom, but then I would get taken off and I'd play like a game or so. I'd be on the bench, I'd get in that bat, I'd go back on. And so I'm on the team, and, uh, and it's the day before opening day. And so, like the team, like the, all the position players are kind of like sitting around the sofa area, and uh, our manager is going through every player and going through the signs and just being like, "Okay, what, what's the sign here? What do we got?" And so he goes to Jimmy and then the Bobby and then the Brian and then the Mike, and then then it's my turn, and I'm like watching, watching. I'm like, "Yeah, I got these signs. Are easy, okay, all right." And then like you know, Johnny's here and uh, and Timmy's right here, and he's like, "Johnny, there you go." You got it? Boom. All right. Then he goes to me. Oh, well, I'm next. And he goes, okay, Timmy. And he gives the signs. And I'm like, 
Coach, my, my turn to tell you what the signs are. And he, you know, Robert, and he just keeps going. And uh, he got everybody, and he just right, skipped right over me. And I was like, I'm, I'm on the, I know I'm on the Phantom DL. I'm on the Invisible DL. Like, I'm, I can still go in and play at some point. Like, I should know the signs. If I'm here, right, I'm on the team. I'm, I'm technically on the roster. Um, so that, that right there, I was like, okay, this, this is not good. Like, I'm on the Phantom DL, but I don't even think Coach can see me. Um, so that was my number two thing where I kind of knew my career was going to be over. The third thing is uh, probably happened a couple weeks later where now I'm, I'm off the Phantom. I'm playing. We're playing in Louisville. Um, and uh, I get a call into the, the manager's office. And usually when you get a call in the manager's office, it's either you're getting cut or you're going up to the big leagues. I knew I wasn't going up to the big leagues. I was like 0 for 1 um, and been on the Phantom DL a lot. Uh, so I, I, I just thought I was getting released. And so I walked in. And I sat down. He's like, hey, hey, Matt, come sit down for a minute. I'm like, oh, gee, this is not good. This happened to me before. This means you're done. And uh, I sat down. And he goes, hey, um, you ever caught before? And I was like, I mean, I caught in like Little League uh, a little bit. And I was like, yeah, I have. And he's like, you think you could do it again? And I was like, yeah, absolutely. And in my mind, I'm thinking like, no chance. Will I, ever ca- I can't catch. I don't even I don't have gear. I haven't caught since I was like 12. But I was like, yes, uh, yes sir, I can. And, uh, and he said, great. He said, you're going to be the backup catcher tonight because uh, we had two catchers called up on the same day. I think it was, I, I believe, I, and again, for some reason I can't remember exactly. I think it was Jan Gomes and, um, and Perez, I think. I can't remember if it was exactly them two, but I remember it was two guys called up. And, uh, and so I had to be the backup catcher. All right? So I had to go get someone else's gear and put it on. And I'm walking back to the clubhouse and I'm like, this has got to be the end. Like when you're named the backup catcher. Basically, you're going to catch the bullpens and get the guys loose. You're probably never going to go into the game. If the starter got hurt, they probably would have chose somebody else. Or we would have forfeited. Um, so, I'm the backup catcher. In my mind, I'm like, you know, my career's probably over. I said, but I'm going to have fun with this. And I go out and, uh, you know, I'm catching for guys before the game. And then I've got to catch in the bullpen all game. And it was just so happened that... That was a bullpen day, which basically means we threw like seven guys during the game. So I had to constantly, I have to warm up guys. And the, probably my most embarrassing point of my career was when I was warming up our closer, who was throwing like 96 mile an hour sinkers. Again, I haven't caught since Little League when guys throw like that. And so I'm trying to catch these like 96 mile an hour sinkers, and they're barreling in this way. And I can't catch it. And so happened to me twice bullpen is on the field and there's a lot of people at this game and two times in a row I go like this to catch it and I catch the ball my momentum takes me this way and I fall over and my feet go up over my head and I'm on the field laying down with my feet over my head and all of a sudden I hear like slowly building like the wave at a stadium laughter getting louder and louder and louder and I realize obviously they're all laughing at me because I'm laying with my feet over my head in the middle of the field you know like you're right off the side of the field right in foul territory so I throw it back and I'm like this is definitely the end of my career this is horrible and uh, I swear the very next pitch he threw me a 96 mile an hour sinker and I went like this and I caught it and I fell over again and my feet went up over my head and everyone started laughing hysterically and now they probably think I'm doing it on purpose even though I'm trying my best to catch the ball and not look like an idiot. Um, I just couldn't do it. So then about a week later, we're in Pawtucket and I get called into the manager's office again and I'm like, he's not asking me to catch this time. And he said, hey Matt, I just wanted to let you know we're going to give you a release. Um, he actually gave me an option. He said, you can get your release now since you're in Pawtucket and you're close to home, or you can come back with us and we're probably going to release you like next week. So I took my release there. I was home and I was like, I don't think they want me here. And I know they just told me they don't want me. So I'm just going to take my release now. And uh, no one else wanted me. And uh, I retired from baseball. Uh, and so that's how my career ended. So that's how I knew I was no longer, not only no longer a prospect, but knew that I was pretty much out the door and done. And, uh, and I was right because it happened not too long afterwards. So hopefully this helps you guys out. Let me know if you have any questions in the comment section below. Subscribe to the channel. Give it a thumbs up. Share with all your friends. All that good stuff. And we'll talk to you later.